To help us out over the next couple of videos in this YouTube series, I've created a new actor project for us to work through. So it's a chat window. Let's have a look at how it runs. So if I click uh, the launcher, a chat room server appears and we can choose to launch different chat windows. So we've launched user one, we've launched user two, and we could launch as many as we wanted. So here we're demonstrating actually launching different actors. Now we could demonstrate sending a message to every actor. So now we could send a message of, hey everyone. And all of these actors received that message. But now let's launch another chat window to show how dynamic this is. When we launched that chat window, notice how the Who's Online automatically updated. If I delete a chat window, notice how it's only that chat window which closed and the rest can carry on running. I could also choose to send a message to an individual user. And different users could choose to update their own statuses. We could choose to launch as many as of these chat windows as we want. The skills I'm going to teach you over the next couple of videos will show you how we can dynamically launch actors, how we can keep a track of all of our actors, the different types of messaging, how we should design our actor system, and all importantly, how we can stop actors, even close our application in a graceful manner. For each of the videos in this series, I'm going to have a starting point and a finishing point on my uh, GitHub page. So if you want to play along with the code at home, uh, you can do. However, in between uh, recordings, I'll probably neaten up the code. So the starting point of one video might be slightly different to the finishing point of the previous video. But all the code will be up and available to you on GitHub so you can download it. To get us started with this project, Let's work on the server actor. So this actor has to respond to some user inputs. So when they click launch chat window, something needs to happen. And when they click send global chat, another thing needs to happen. OK, so we're starting off with just opening and closing our actor, like I showed you in the previous tutorial. Now, it should come as no surprise, but when we click these buttons, we're going to launch an event. So let's just put down an event structure. And so when we click uh, launch chat window, we need to generate an event that will execute a function in our actor core. Remember that the actor core is down here. In order to execute a function, we, vet, we first need to write a method and then create a message to execute that method. So let's write a method called launch new chat window. Let's go to our actor in our project, right click, go to new. Even I don't anticipate us having any child actors. So we can create VI from static dispatch. And I'm going to save this as uh, launch new chat window. And we can save. It's just a test uh, functionality. I'm going to put in a one button dialog box. Great, so we've created our dummy method. And to, in order to execute that method, we need to create a message. So let's right click Act Framework, Create Message. And that's scripting in the background now. So we've got messages for this actor, and we can drag across the Send Launch New Chat Window BI. I'll put that in there. So we want to send this message when the event occurs. So we can edit event case and select a launch chat window. We need to tell this VI where to send the message. So we need to look at our self-in-queuer. 
Hopefully you remember that from our last video. So at framework, read self and cure. I'll put this uh, down to our actor object. Now it's important here that we wire this to our actor object before we call the parent method. So before this call parent method function. And then we can wire our message and cure up to our send message function. The next event case we should have is send chat. So we can right click add event case and then look for send chat. And again, I'll create a quick uh, method for send chat. Okay, so I've already created the message there. And I actually called it send global chat because when we click this button, we want to send the message to every um, chat window. So we can send global chat there. And we also want to create an event case. So when the user clicks the close panel button, um, our actor stops. So let's right click add event case, go to this VI, uh, the panel close filter event with the question mark and we're going to discard this event so we discard it so the event will have occurred but we choose not to act however this sub diagram will still execute so we're going to send a stop actor or a, um, a normal so we're going to send a normal stop message Now we can save. So at this point, we still have a broken run arrow because we haven't wired up our stop. So this is where it gets a bit challenging. We need to generate a user event in order to stop this loop. Now you might be thinking, why don't we just wire the true constant to the stop terminal? Well, there might be several different reasons why we need this actor to stop. It's not just if the user clicks the close button, there could be an error or another actor might be asking this actor to stop. So it's the actor's responsibility to stop the helper loop as opposed to the other way around. In order to find out how we should be launching this user event, we need to do a bit of theory now to find out what's actually happening inside actor.vi. When we launch an actor, we're actually launching actor.vi. So let's have a look at actor.vi. This is actor.vi. Every time we launch a new actor, this is what we're launching. The actor core, which we're becoming familiar with, is this item in the center. And if we double click that, you can see the top level actor core in actor.class which we've talked about previously. And the second implementation here is the override, which we're working on now. There's one other VI in here, which I want to point you towards now. That is free launch in it. It is this VI here. Now this is a dynamic dispatch VI as well. So in server, we're going to override this VI in order to set up our references. The first reference that we're going to set up is our user event reference. We're going to then destroy our user event reference in our stop core VI. The stop core VI is actually inside the actor core. And if you go to the stop VI, the stop core is this VI here. Now this is a dynamic dispatch VI as well. So this is where we're going to destroy or release all of our references. So just to recap, free launch init is where we should create our references. Actor core is where we will use our references. And then stop core is where we can release them. Okay, so now let's go ahead back to our project and create and destroy those user events. Okay, so now let's create two VIs for override. 
So we can right click our actor, go to new, BI for override, and let's select free launch init and stop call. And click OK. And I'll save these as well. To keep our actors nice and tidy, I like to create virtual folders for all of my override VIs. So I'll do that as well. Okay, so in pre-launch in it, we want to create our user events. We're going to be creating a stop user event. In order to pass the reference of this user event from free launch init through to actor core through to the stop core, we're going to need to add the user event to our private data. The easiest way I found to do that is to create a control of our user event. I will rename this. And then cut and paste it into our class private data. However, there's a bit of a trick here. With user events, I actually put all of those into a separate cluster. The reason I do that is so I can wire that cluster directly into register for user events instead of wiring all of our user event references individually. Just to recap, actors in the actor framework are simply classes. So in the same way you can bundle and unbundle a class object, you can do that with an actor. An actor is just a class. There's a trick that I'm going to use now in pre-launch init. Let's say for some reason an error occurs, either generating that user event or in one of our parent overrides of pre-launch init. If an error does occur, we want to release our references right here in pre-launch init, because if there's an error out of here, actor core will not execute. So there's our finished pre-launch init. So we're creating our user event, bundling it into our object, and then if an error did occur, we are destroying that user event. So that's how we're creating that user event. Let's now look at closing that user event or releasing it. We're going to do that in the stop core. So here in stop core, we're going to unbundle our object again. We're then going to generate the user event because if stop core is executing, it means that the actor core loop has finished. So we should send a user event to stop our helper loop. And then we can destroy our user event. So we'll start off by generating a user event and then destroying user event. There we have it. Okay, so now we've created and destroyed that user event. We now need to connect that to our event structure. So we'll do that in actor core. So we have our helper loop here. Let's unbundle and register for user events. So we'll add a new event case, by right, add event case, go to the dynamic stop, click OK, in then now we can wire our true constant to that stop terminal. And let's also unregister for user events at the end. Very 
Great, so let's test our functionality so far. Let's open up our Launcher VI and wire across our server actor object. And if an error um, occurs during launch, we can show that with a simple error handler. Click Control R. Now you can see that our front panel has opened up as we expected and we created some methods. So when we click this button, new chat window dialog box appears. And when we click send global chat, another dialog box appears. So now we know that we've set up our messages correctly. The last thing we should test is, okay, if I click panel close, does the actor stop? So when I click panel close, you can see that the actor closed and there aren't any locked items in our project. So we know that nothing is accidentally running in the background. In this video, we looked at three overrides, three launch init, actor core and stop core. And we also looked at how we can use user events in order to stop our helper loops. But it's worth remembering, we could also use user events in order to update front panel indicators as well. In the next video, I'm going to go through how we can design actor systems, how we can launch nested actors and what that really means, and also how we can keep a track of nested actors in our application. Great, catch you later.